Every opinion expressed here is strictly that of the person who gives it. Let us consciously and lovingly agree to disagree if it does not resonate with us. Today's topic is what are you afraid of? And it is going to be um, presented by our uh, pastor, Reverend Jenny Vinecourt. And I'm sure there's a, uh, whatever I'm thinking of, a bio down here, but I like to give my own bio. So um, Reverend Jenny has been a member of this church for a long, 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 long time. And she dedicates a good portion of her life to this church. And we are so grateful to have her as our lead pastor. She had, lives on a farm with her husband and lots of little animals and big animals. Um, and she, she makes a beautiful life for herself. She's, she's been struggling a little bit with some health issues, but she's kept the church right at the top of her list of priorities throughout this struggle. And we are so grateful for that. So it is my pleasure to introduce Reverend Jenny Vinecourt. Uh, you do need the clippy. I think. Wait, which way does it go? Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right. Can everybody hear me? In Zoom land. Okay, cool. All right. So, good morning. Thank you for the lovely bio and the introduction. Thank you, friend. So, um, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of dying, being alone? Are you afraid of the dark? Or maybe afraid of failure? Maybe you're afraid of dogs or horses, snakes. Do you fear being laughed at, ridiculed, afraid someone might find out your secret? Some of my own are a fear of not being prepared, which uh, is what I told myself yesterday as this lecture was not written. <sighs> Even though I know in my head and my heart that spirit wouldn't let me down and wouldn't let me flounder up here anyway, but I like to be prepared. Another is the fear of not being good enough. Uh, I can locate several places in, in times that this theory was introduced or reinforced in my life. I don't think I have a fear of dying yet. I certainly don't want to suffer. I'll put that on the list. Um, and I guess that um, there are many other things to be put on my list of fears. I no longer fear being alone, but I can remember a time when that was high on the list. But why does it matter? If fear isn't real, if all is really love, why the heck does it matter? But oh, it sure feels like it matters. It sure feels real when you're in the middle of it. And I'm guessing that most of us have run across fear at some point in our lives. The past couple of years, I've had my share, and I'm also well aware that it's sometimes quite the struggle to fight against it. And I've also realized that fighting is futile, <laughs> futile. For me, it's been better to accept what you have been given and what you're feeling and know that it'll pass, whether that's fear, depression, illness, whatever. It'll change, it'll pass. That's the only given, it'll pass. And when I tend to fight it, it hangs around longer. Did you all realize that too? When we fight it, it hangs around, yeah. What we resist persists, as one of my teachers used to say, although at certain times, um, I can take issue with that statement, as in some instances, I think that persistence and resistance are also important. Before I came to church this morning, just a little story. I, um, my husband had come home from uh, church with his son, and their Catholic church is earlier than my church. So they came home. They're mulling around the kitchen, getting ready to make pancakes and stuff that I can't have anyway. But anyway, he was talking about one of the dogs, and he was saying um, that she doesn't like controversy, one of the dogs. I said, I don't either, unless I start it. <laughs> so, so I think that, um, that uh, resist and persisting and, and Fighting against it. it is a fine line for me. Excuse me, but let's run with what we resist persists for today. Let me give you a tangible explanation or example of how this was shown to me. Um, Cindy, I think you remember this. Would you come up here and volunteer? Yeah, I was right. Um, I'm going to move to this side of the. Oh, I don't know where everybody is. 
But you'll all get the gist. Okay, so Cindy, if you would stand over here. Remember, Mark Thomas used to teach this. Okay. Oh, which, oh. which lesson? Which lesson? Which lesson? Okay. What we resist persists. I want you to. I want you to come at me and kind of push. Pushing back and pushing back and nobody's getting anywhere. Okay. Right. Okay. So, you can do it again and get ready to grab that. And then she, the the person who's pushing just falls away if I don't resist it. Do it one more time. <laughs> and off she goes. So, so, but that's just a tangible example of if we resist, nobody gets anywhere, the, the pusher or the pushy. Um, but anyway, we live in a fear-based society. We are conditioned to fear many things, and religion is one of those that, in my belief, has used fear to control the masses, most religions. Other places that use fear to control the masses, uh, the news, social media, uh, TV in general, a gazillion, yeah, the internet, every, it, everything. We're conditioned that way. The dictionary says, as a noun, fear means a dis distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, etc. Whether the threat is real or imagined, the dictionary says that. And as a verb, it means to feel apprehensive or uneasy. To me, that both says that fear itself is just an emotion or a feeling. It's not real. It's not a tangible, real thing that we can touch. It's not something that we can um, actually put our finger on. So before I go into what some of the sacred texts say about fear, I'd like to, and this is another fear that we might have, is letting people know, letting other people know what the hell we're afraid of. But I'm going to try it anyway. I want some examples of what at some point in your life, doesn't have to be right now, what you've been afraid of. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. Being insignificant is what one example is. Do I have another one? Yes. Heights, fear of heights, okay. Okay, disappointing people and disappointing ourselves, yes. A fear of health. Or hell, hell, oh yeah, that's a big one. Fear of fear of hell, yeah, yeah. And that was that was religious religion taught, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Yes. Ah, not having a purpose, not having a purpose of why am I here? Okay, in the back. Disappointing others. Yeah. Fear of being wrong. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fear of falling. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, that. Oh, there was another one. Yeah. Okay. So, a, as a child, a fear of uh, parents dying or parents not coming back when they leave the house. Yeah. So we really, there's no. Um, there's no shortage of, of fears that we have, and some are rational. Most are not, but they feel real. So what some of the sacred texts have to say about fear. First, uh, into a look into Hinduism. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 40, it says, In this spiritual endeavor, there is no loss or diminution. Sorry diminution, sorry, and a, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous types of fear. That's what the Bhagavad Gita says. Kind of what it means is we exist with all kinds of fears that are often buried deep inside of us, only surfacing from time to time. Because we live in this continual state of fear, we're not always aware of our actual situation. So if we live in a a constant state of fear, and sometimes we're not even aware of it. Sorry, I had to try to stay right here. Um, uh, if we live in that continuous state of fear, we miss our now. We miss our life. We miss our what the heck is happening right now. Um, in the Muslim faith, the Quran gives us advice on how to overcome fear, um, and it says that everyone suffers from some type of fear, so you're not alone, first of all. Allah has created us with a natural inbuilt fear that is there to protect you from danger. However, much of the time, the fear is exaggerated and 
psychological. So how can you overcome your fear? The Quran teaches us a beautiful lesson and guides us back to Allah to extinguish fear. Your fears will subside and disappear in the face of a great power. Fear is something conjured up by the mind and it has a physical and emotional reaction which no one enjoys. So the Quran gives us a very simple solution. The simple answer is follow the guide, Allah, and you will lose your fear of the unknown. Now, the Bible, oh, there's a gazillion things about fear in the Bible. I'll only give you a few. Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dis dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I think most are familiar with that one. And probably the, the next one as well. In uh, uh, 1 John 4.18, <coughs> Excuse me. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. That's not the one I meant. I meant the one after that. But anyway, and Joshua 1 9. This one I think is familiar to you. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for your Lord, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So and there, like I said, there's a gazillion more in the Bible about um, uh, fear, what to do about it, and uh, don't do it. <laughs> and I'm reminded of something my teacher and friend, another teacher and friend, said to us all the time when we were worried about or fearful about something, whether it be in class or in life or whatever. She would say, how big is your God? Meaning, if you trust in a higher being, whatever that's called, he or she can handle anything thrown at them and certainly can handle anything you may be afraid of. So how big is your God? Why not if we, whatever you, um, God, goddess, you know, whatever, wh wherever you are in the scheme of things, whatever your higher power is to you, whatever you choose to call your higher power, he or she is, can handle anything. Even those rational fears, like, oh, shit, I'm up. Oh, excuse me. We, we do have children, but they're too young yet. Sorry. Like, oh, my God, I am on this cliff. I'm going to fall down. Okay, that's a rational, you know, rational fear. If somebody pushes me, I'm a goner. Um, but even my God can handle that, whether I stay on the cliff or whether I fall off the cliff. Eh, it's handled. It's not, it's not something I need to worry about. Well, to be rational, it would be smart for me to back up, but, <laughs> but it's, not a, um, it's not something that can't be handled. Judaism teaches that the fear of God is a positive motivator for greatness. I don't agree with all of these, but I'm just giving you examples. The Hebrew, Hebrew word yira. I think that's how you pronounce it, means both to fear and to see. The essential choice of life is to open our eyes to available opportunities and to fear the consequences of avoiding that reality. In Jewish thought, the love and fear of God are to be understood as complementing one another. Now, Taoism, 550 years before Jesus, the Chinese Taoists discovered how to gain strength in the midst of, excuse me, turmoil, fear, and panic. They taught that if we lived in accordance with nature, rather than fight against it, we would find peace and fulfillment in our daily lives. The Taoists emphasized that the opposites are inseparable, the concept of yin and yang. To live, to fear, is to ensure all your own potentials erode away into nothing. Learn to live life fully and learn to release what isn't real from your life. Now, in spiritualism, I think that we're taught, depending on the spiritualist church, because we are, are all a little bit different, but I think we're taught that all things are either fear or love. <coughs> Excuse me. And I believe that the more we practice being of love, in love, just being love, then the less we'll be dealing with fear. We won't have as much time. Um, it's like... Uh, you fill yourself up with, I mean, this is such a simple concept, but sometimes I need to be reminded. Um, 
you know, you fill yourself up with, with the love and that positive energy, then there's no room for the rest. Um, kind of like when I, when I do a house blessing, do I chase things away? Do I, you know, shoo shoo all the bad spirits away? No, that's not how I do it. I fill it up with love. So there's no room for anything else, to, you know, to, to linger. But anyway, this last piece is from the, the co-manifesting website. Oh no, I want to, I don't want to stop before I want to do that. What have and I'm going to involve you guys again, but I will try to repeat for the Zoom people. Um, what is your concept of spiritualism and fear and love? You know, how do you put that all together in the religion of spiritualism? Oh, dear. <laughs> Renee, Renee, go ahead. Well, for me, um, in spiritualism, uh, what you surrender to is the love and surrendering are okay. uh, uh, and allowing our okay. trying to keep on the hold on to a certain thought. Like, how yeah. oh, and how divine Okay, so, so surrender, surrender and love is kind of synonymous for you in the spiritualism uh, spiritualism realm. And that come, um, you know, the fear is more of a control thing that if you try to hang on to it, it gets in the way of surrendering. Surrendering is, yeah. Sur surrendering it will allow supersede love. Got it. I see another hand. I'm sorry, fear. Fear, not supersede love. <laughs> supersede fear. All right. <laughs> yes. Just in very simple terms, I mean, the two, you, you just use love to, to get rid of fear. I mean, I. I don't see it being any, any more you, than that. Yeah, it's, use love to get rid of fear. Yeah, I mean, it's that's pretty simple. I yeah. get from this is being here is that I can use love in, in a direct and then an indirect way to get rid of any fears that I have. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it seems pretty simple. That's, yeah, that's why I want to discuss it a little bit because it, it is pretty, seems pretty simple. But, uh, yes. So, I see I see personal responsibility as an important spiritualist concept. So you, you take responsibility to try to understand life, to do, to do what's best for yourself and others. And, and you know that, uh, that God loves you and is always present and can help you uh, uh, deal with whatever comes, but you can't control everything and you just accept that. Acceptance, yeah. Hey, I've got an idea, Lydia. Why don't you have them just pass that instead of you running? Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pass it. Was, pass it. It was pass. Yeah, let him pass it to her and we'll go from there. There you go. Both, both Millers. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about the big concept in spiritualism, proving the continuity of life. I mean, it's a huge part of spiritualism. And I, it is to remove some fear that our loved loved ones aren't gone, that well, we well, aren't gone when we're when in, we, in, yeah. in When it looks like we're not we're right. gone in, when, in the body. When right. it looks okay. like we're gone. Um, I think it's a, a, a very big part of, of what we're doing. There was something else in that. It's all right. I can't. Hey, behind you, Jay, Andrea. There you go. So I, I loved what you said about there's uh, no room. <laughs> and the reason why there's no room for both is because you can't be in two places at the same time. So when people are um, using prayer as something to hide behind, and yet they're talking about what's wrong with the person that they're praying for, please help them see their wrong ways. Yeah. You are ne you cannot be in two places at one time. You're either one. That's not coming from love. Yeah. Other. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the thing is, and it, you if you're not feeling the grace of God, then you're not feeling the grace of God. You're not there. You're somewhere else, you know, and fear is not feeling the grace of alignment, you know? Yeah. And so you're, and that's a fine a line fence to, especially when I'm, con um, I'm controlling my controversy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and there's nothing wrong with feeling yeah. that you, it, it just makes you sensitive of where you're at, but yeah. Yeah, you can't be in two places at once. You gotta, exactly. and, and it's a, dis, a moment to moment decision. Yeah. So, with, with fear being the opposite of love, 
and vice versa. And I think that a lot of what you said, and I'm tying in with what you said and what Reverend Renee said, is that a lot of the sacred texts talk about dissolving fear in love, in God, and, and surrendering. And I think spiritualism kind of being that unifying because we see things from a different perspective, we would see the perspective of a lot of the sacred texts that say, you know, if how big is your God? Mm -hmm. it, it dissolves, it dissolves in love yeah. if you allow it. If you allow it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna close that close these down for now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this last piece is from a website called um, Home Manifesting. And they write, what is the spiritual root of fear? All fear originates from you disconnecting from your true spiritual nature. You are a divine being and that divinity, which is your life force can never be harmed in any way. What part of you can never experience fear or apprehension or, or anxiety of any kind? Your soul or your spirit is that divine part that is who you really are. It can never die and exist in all eternity. Your emotions will fluctuate. Your soul is fearless, deathless, and never changes. It is that part of you that comes directly from God or creator or whatever you want to call him or her. It is your eternal connection to divinity and infinite intelligence. <coughs> it is this part of you that can never experience the fear because it can never be harmed. So why fear? It can never die. It can never be removed from its true essence, which is nothing but pure and unconditional love. If all your fears are imagined, then what is holding you back in your life is really only an invisible threat. The best acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. Most of us have heard that, correct? And the great Nelson Mandela, who endured years of mental, physical, and emotional abuse while wrongfully imprisoned, had a form written by William Ernest Henley, stuck to his prison cell for 27 years. And this poem speaks exactly to what we are talking about here. There is a part of you that can never be harmed and over which only you have complete control. And here's the poem. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall me and, and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how, how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And with that, I'll close with this thought. You are love and you are a divine part of God. And most of all, you are discovering by being here today, by being on this path, we are all one because we all originate from the same source. And it's that spark of the creator within each of us that is who we really are. Thank you. <laughs> I, okay, the question is, are the babies, uh, we've got a couple of babies here today, Zoomers, yay. Um, and the question is, are they taught fear? And my answer is, in my belief, yep. As soon as we start, teaching them anything. And, and mm, unfortunately, I believe, excuse me, and I can only speak for myself, but um, I think that as parents, and no offense to the parents here, but I'm only speaking for myself, but as soon as we start teaching them anything, because we were taught fear, so we, this is what we know, you know, so it takes, you know, It'll take generations of work to undo that. And I think we do a little bit at a time. Yes. Mm. 
a like a pure thing, like irrational fears fear. that may not be taught, like of snakes. Okay. Right. Right. So I think about this for our fear of dogs. Whatever, like nothing ever happens to a child or whatever taught this parent loves dogs or what, you know whatever it is that it's karmic. Mm, it is might like be karmic. Cat, yeah. Um, okay. And that that action Okay, cool. And then, okay, that that, um, that fear might be karmic and that it actually could be cleared. That's a cool thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. And, okay, one more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Right, and that would fall into. Yeah, we that would be that would fall into that. Exactly. Oh yeah, off the mark, which is the sin, hamartia or something. <laughs> But it's it's all a big thinker. It's a big thinker, definitely. And I'll leave it back to you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for your participation. Clippy, 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 clippy. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was great. Um, I have a couple comments. One, I believe that it, I believe what you said, Carrie, about it being karmic. But I think that a lot of that like fear of snakes that we don't know where it comes from. It's fear of the unknown. You know, like if you've never seen a snake before, I might, I took my grandsons to this Herps Alive thing that's in um, Lyndhurst where they have rescue, believe it or not, rescue turtles, snakes, all kinds of everything. And he's ne never seen a snake before, but he just freaked out when he saw the snakes. And it's because he didn't know. You know, he didn't know anything about a snake. So I think fear of the unknown is um, something. And then I have an, a little bit of advice for when you are feeling fearful is what you, you need to do is do something that you love during that time, because it will re, it can replace that feeling if you do it, if you do it, if you put yourself into a, a experience that is a loving experience for you, then it, then you can maybe get that fear away and I won't feel fear for a long time because I get to hold the baby and that's what I love <laughs> you know so for for Jenny's talk I get to hold the baby so okay so to usher in our time for truth healing and messages from spirit please rise for our next songs um, on page number three spirit in the sky